Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts and episode 50 of the French campaign. And we're near the end here. And we've got this Frigibee class <laughs> battleship to, um, well, I don't know, actually. This could be potentially a very nasty ship. Uh, so we'll have to see, have to see what's going on with it. Oh, it's vital statistics again. The luckiest ship in the universe. Right. Let's see if our luck holds. We also have the Hussar, which is not mine. This is a Austrian ship, which is going to be a little bit more aggressive, I think. Um, yes. Well, I say it's an Austrian ship. It, it's not. It's a Norwegian ship, right? Uh, where's the flag? Yep. It is a Norwegian ship that uh, <laughs> they bought off the Austro-Hungarians and then immediately turned around and sided with the French, which is Absolutely hilarious. Right, let's have a look at this bad boy. Good grief. <laughs> that is a lot of guns. <laughs> I kind of love it. It's not a stupid arrangement. Um, <laughs> how big are they? 437. They're not nothing. Keep firing at it for now. They seem determined to uh, take out the SAR. Can't imagine why. I like it. Oh. Main belt pin off of the Hussar. Could be a very low armor design. Another main belt pin, this one from Vital Statistics. Another main belt pin? Yeah, she's taking big, big damage here. And again, knocked out the uh, bridge. It's a shame. If, if I, I reckon this will be under armoured, if they drop those two turrets and put all that weight into armour, I think it would have uh, really helped. Oh, they did get a hit back on the Hussar. Final statistics. Can you close the distance, please? Thank you. Although they are obsessed firing backwards, which is the least useful thing they can do. It is fast. Yeah, it has basically no armor. At least it has some. Like, 30 millimeters is not a lot, but it's enough to keep out, like, really small AG shells. Um, like, that can keep out the HE shells from the 155s, for instance. Um, but yeah, relatively thin main belt. Um, oh my god, the cost! Um, why is it so expensive? Diesel engine. Yeah. Uh, diesels get it prohibitively expensive if you're trying to build a big, fast vessel. They're really uh, specified for slow, slower and smaller ships. 
really you'd want gas turbines for something like that. A couple of main belt pins on Rosetsky. Taking a little bit of water. Still obsessed with the uh, SAR. So Final Statistics is able to just pile shells into it. That's a lot of flooding. Structure's very low as well. Got him. Well. I don't think the transports are going to off uh, much in the way of resistance. Isar is also very capable of dealing with them with all these small guns. One of the transports on with out of interest. 78 and a half mil. Yeah. They're all going to get totally wrecked. And you can enjoy that. Well, <laughs> that did not go well for Austria. Those are terrible ships. Uh, well, they're not terrible. I mean, they ran into something relatively lightly armed uh, that they could just immediately outshoot. But, uh, yeah, against something like the Gore class, that is... I mean, they are slightly faster, but not enough. Anyway, 186,000 victory points for me! <laughs> Back to the map. All right, uh, it's now April of 1962, and we have taken Kosovo. However, the Austro-Hungarian uh, army lodge is climbing because they have built, been on a building spree, and of course, as their territory shrinks, their army lodge is going to go up. Um, so it's getting harder and harder for us to push on land. I really need them to engage my fleets, but they don't seem to want to. Um... There's not much I can do about it. Okay. Uh, it's t obviously, it hurt me. Uh, the the Freaky free, free, um <laughs> is back. Or the, the lead ship. If they've just built all of their battleships as these things, they are boned. Um, <laughs> and it, they have run into a bunch of goals. Which the AI, uh, well, when I said which the game will evaluate as a fair fight, because my ships are about two billion each. I have about ten of them. That's twenty billion versus a twenty billion dollar battleship. Seems totally fair. Uh, it's not totally fair. We're absolutely going to wreck them. Right. Um, let us create. Our divisions, first of all. Asterix follow uh, orthopedics. Cacophonix follow Asterix. Just for kicks, follow Cacophonix. Gaul follow just for kicks. And Obelix follow the Gaul. And then 
dogmatics follow Publix, get fix follow dogmatics, and astronomics follow get fix. And then turn all the nonsense off. Not that I really need to, but uh, th this is how, if you have a big, if you want a big battleship line, uh, with the way the game is currently working, this, this is a much more stable way to uh, to get it to work. Yep, here she comes. The stupidly named ship <laughs> with not enough armor. Yeah, I, I reckon th these two turrets combined. I mean, if they're anything like my ones, that's about twelve thousand tons, ish. Probably between ten and twenty thousand tons. Oh, hit straight away. Fuck me. Um, that side very close to each other. That they could have put into armor. Yeah, I'm not surprised the destroyer immediately sinks. They get hit by like seven shells all at once. Uh, orthopedics here to uh, as lead ship to uh, eliminate the destroyers. Let the others shoot at what they want. actually taking a lot of damage there. Right, you can retreat. And who's the next ship in the line? Asterix. You're going to take over. Boom. Lovely shot. Right. It's on the next one. The rest of them are handling things. But those cruisers are very annoying with their um, very dangerous AG shells. Load AP. Lovely. Right. That dealt with. Orthopedics retreating safely. Look at that. See, the line is not perfect, but if I'd have time to actually let it sort itself out, it'd be okay. And down goes the Fiji Biggie. <laughs> the cruisers were more dead, dangerous than it was. And they're like a tenth. No, less than a tenth of the price. Or like a hundredth of the price. Price. I'd rather have a hundred of those versus one of those. No contest. Right. Uh, back to the map. Okay, a, cu a couple more uh, cruisers have wandered uh, into into the, the fleet of Gauls. I'm not going to show this because it's just going to be me absolutely wrecking them at range. Um, and I'll, I'll just see you post-battle. Uh, whoops, I, I clicked the... the I, I'm so used to just clicking the, the screen, I totally forgot. Um, I sunk one of them, the other one ran away. It was basically a ghost battle. Uh, not very interesting. Uh, I'm going to move the fleet down to Lithuania, which we will begin to invade. Oh, the Austrians had a revolution. How nice for them. Um, <laughs> their economy is in free fall. Has that changed? No, their army logistics is still okay. Uh, however, we can get it to go down even more by sinking the Sikrish here. Vital statistics... Um, might be able to pull that off. <laughs> uh, 
Okie dokie. Target that. What do you have to help out? Magol. Okay, Magol is probably going to get targeted by the enemy ship. Um, so, I think I'm going to push in with the vital statistics. And uh, keep the Magol back a bit. So I like to get in range. Wow, that's a long range hit. 35 kilometers out. on firing as well. And yeah, they are trying to hit the Magol. Oh, and did. Right, Magol. Get out of here. That will have the beneficial effect of drawing the enemy in to the guns of the vital statistics because the AI gets a bee in its bonnet about killing ships it can it thinks it can hurt the most easily and ignores battleships bearing down on it partial pens we should swap up to AP now that the secondaries are firing. Uh, they need a bad angle. They're fine. There we go. There's the main belt pen. It's going to start degrading their combat ability very fast. Keep getting those. Boom, there we go. Big chunk of structure taken off. And another one. Oh yes, finally some flooding. Damage the steering gear. I'll all ricochet off. go. Lovely. Flooding. Well, reasonable amount of flooding. Still not paying attention to me. I don't know um, if the devs are watching this. You might be. Uh, I think it might be worth just having ships also target the closest enemy ship. Um, as a higher priority thing. I mean, it's not the worst targeting logic in the world. Because I should be taking a whole pile of damage here. I mean, Magon is hanging on by a thread. Ah, and sinks. Which is unfortunate, but... Yeah, that just let me get the jump on a... Shit, <laughs> twit... <laughs> A very expensive battleship. Although this one is not as expensive. Oh, he uses turbines. Okay, but still, it's a 100,000 ton battleship. Um, which has even less armor. Hilarious. Uh, versus... How much is Magol? Six... Seven hundred million. Yeah. Easily take that. Right, I'll let the vital statistics go kill the transports, but I won't make you sit through it. See you back on the map. Ah, there we go. <clears throat> Shame about the Magol, but uh, these things are going to happen. Um, quite happy to take out another.
battleship, especially one that's that big. Let's head back to the map. All right, um, for you, this is <laughs> instantaneous. But for me, this is actually the next day because, uh, yeah, uh, recording session got totally interrupted. I've got two of these Bosna class light -like cruisers. Um, they're reasonably nasty things, and uh, they can easily destroy these two ships. I tried to withdraw, but I couldn't. Um, so I have to fight the battle, but I'm going to try as best I can to just bug out, basically. I, I have no intention of tangling with them. So, given that we're starting reasonably far apart, might be able to just skedaddle. Um, I do want to try and take them on, but these things are packing. They have 16, 190, more well, 191 millimeter guns. That is a lot of firepower for a light cruiser. So yeah, I'm going to skedaddle, and uh, I'll see you back on the map. Alright, it's now January of 1963. Uh, we've taken Lithuania. I've ordered the fleet up to... Well, Gulf of Riga, really, isn't it? Um, no, not Gulf of Riga. Uh, that's here. Um, anyway, up towards St. Petersburg <laughs> and Kronstadt. Uh, we're going to try and navally invade central Russia. Um... And hopefully we can then link the Georgia front with this front. And then we can we can really put the squeeze on the Austro-Hungarians, whose armyology has dropped to 49%. Um, they still have loads of money in the bank. Uh, more than us, actually. Um, which is... Not great. I'm going to have to deal with that at some point. Um, we've, we've got loads of money, though. We can we we can afford to spend it for now. And, uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be back when there's some more action. Okay, Alsace has bumped into some ships. Um, I put the blockading fleet uh, actually into Ancona. Um, they'll still act to blockade the Austro-Hungarians but it'll be slightly cheaper to keep them in port uh, than it will to keep them constantly at sea means that they will automatically repair and rearm and given that they're split up they should generate a few more battles hopefully wow okay um, this could be interesting because those uh, those cruisers can be a little bit annoying wow Lave and Dupitoma Portho, wow, you are a s slow ass bunch. Um, <laughs> wow, this is really a fleet of uh, oldies in the main. 34, 34, okay. The destroyers, I want to form up with the Ile or Ile, one of the two. And you follow that one, and... Okay. The Alsace is going to operate on our own. And then the slow ships. It's the three heavy cruisers. And the Pluton. I'm going to form a kind of slow-moving... <laughs> <laughs> Slow moving division. Save, 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 save. There we go. Okay, we spotted the heavy. Oh, of course. Um, <laughs> inevitably, there was an update. Um, 
between the uh, end of the, the well in the middle of this episode there's been an update to the game which is all about fixing <laughs> fixing the issue of stuck ships and I think we have some stuck ships So, no, it's still broken. <laughs> I only ever see it um, after they put in the patch notes that they fixed it. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, I think they've, they're, they're, they're uh, buzzing about now. Don't want to get too close. Just want to keep an eye on them. Bring the uh, heavier units up. She might be worth a torpedo shot if you have the have the option. Just firing blindly pretty much but never know might hit something Looks like it's the heavy cruiser that is uh, broken. Very broken by the looks of it. Mm -hmm. Hilarious to see these ships move it in. Oh, that was a good shot. Alsace. Yeah, these ones with the cat ballistic. Actually, no, it's only standard. On some of them. I'm sure they had like super heavy shells or something. with a big hit on uh, Salfelden. Uh, do any of these have torpedoes? No. No, it doesn't look like they do. So, we can close in a little bit. Yeah, he doesn't even have the things above it. <laughs> Still, I'm happy to take out these uh, like cruisers. They uh, are annoying. Oh wow, this is. I think this is worse. <laughs> whatever they did, whatever they were trying to fix, I think they've just made it worse. Uh, could just be it's the first battle um, I've properly played. Like they're not even shooting. They're they're just totally broken. <laughs> okay. Or 
also feels like the game is really choppy. Maybe it's uh, the AI. Like, there's something... Maybe it's this ship. Maybe the heavy cruiser is totally wigged out and uh, causing all the issues. It might not be a frame rate issue, though. Look. This thing's, like, just moving in a really weird way. Oh, well. Hopefully they fix... Fix... Undo whatever they tried to fix. Oh, Jesus. Right, slowly get these ships sunk. I don't even know if I can sink that heavy cruiser. It is taking damage, but there's no way to tell if it's gonna actually sink. Oh, there, nope, there it did, and that fixed it. Yeah, something to do with the torpedoes, I think. Did that fix the light cruisers? Yes. <laughs> so is this this ship in particular was causing the problems. Great. Right. Uh, pull back. Full back. Full back. Wow, <laughs> that top. <laughs> I don't know where that's going. Come on, Eile. It's five. Well, you can see why I was cautious around those light cruisers. They're nasty. Um, yeah, a bit, a bit annoying that it's buggy, but, I mean, this save has been going so long, I can't really blame the devs that much. Right, back to the map. All right, looks like the Austrians are going to uh, do some opposing. This must represent a sizable chunk of their fleet. Um, the Shona is a refitted Frigibee. <laughs> Plus, so could have slightly different capabilities. They've slowed it down a lot, um, but this is running into a very large and very powerful fleet. This might be the end of the Austrians um, if we can pull this off, sink all the ships. Uh, they may not have much left, and they've been blockaded for a while. So they, their economy is really suffering. Hmm. If I had longer left in the game, I would peace out, take a feck ton of money and territory off them, and then destroy them later. But obviously we're not going to do that for uh, content reasons. <laughs> but also because... Um, yeah, the they we don't have enough time to uh, finish the game otherwise. Right, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna have to sort this fleet out. Right, um, start off. I don't want anybody in a division really. Or at least not to start with. Right, uh, Pothos, you are. You're an old forwarder. Actually, I can have a division. So, hold on. This is going to be very complicated. My apologies. So, Lorraine and Porthos. Porthos and Lorraine. Okay. Cool. France 
is a regular ship. Athos can go in here. You probably guess what I'm going to do here. Um, the Tanyan. You can also go to that division. Um, Muscaton and Planchette can go in there. I do have a. I do have a plan. Paris can go in there. Uh, we don't want Danton in. Charlemagne should. <laughs> Muscaton is already in. So is Planchette. All right, and then we've got Clemenceau. I don't want in there. Grimo and Bazin. I do. I'm going to the big div. Charles Martel. You're going in there too. Rotate. You are not fully automatic. You are not right. I think that's all the all forward ships in a single division who are going to go <laughs> line abreast um, and go that way, which is going to be a bit weird. How far away are we actually? Uh, well, actually, you could probably turn in a little bit. Right, the rest of you, fully automatics, Corbet. Uh, yeah, Corbet, you follow fully automatics. Clemenceau, follow Corbet. France, follow there. Danton, follow. Nope. France, follow that one. Danton, follow one. Rotate, follow that one. And then we have you lot, follow Ben. Uh, and this is a big fleet battle. Let's just get the uh, light, sh squishy ships out of the way. <laughs> That is that is genuinely an enormous fleet of ships. Yeah, doesn't look like any of the uh, Austrian ships are stuck, which is good. But I am going to have fully automatics target the flagship. Wow, what a mess. I don't need to turn all this off, of course. Right, let's get firing. Porthos leading the charge. Something sank. Yeah, we've got some destroyers coming in. Well, they might be light cruisers, I suppose. 
Still, taking a lot of fire here, the Austrians. Another ship goes down. Yeah, it's their light cruiser screening force. Planchette has taken a lot of fire here. I'm going to tell her to pull back. Or him, I should say. French ships using uh, the pronoun of the thing that they are named after. Torpedo hit. Nice. Yeah, once we've dealt with the initial chaos, this should hopefully die down a little bit. Oh, devastation. Took a torpedo. It's unfortunate. Let's get her detached and pulling back. Ah, what glorious chaos. Because... How's their battleship doing? Ah, uh, Sharon is not doing too badly. Oh, it's just a torpedo, though. Didn't do much, but still. Oh, my word. Cruisers going down all over the shop. Oh, jeez. Torpedo hits on Bazin. Yeah, Bazin. Focus on the ship that's closest to you. I really don't understand why that is not the uh, the kind of default behaviour. Actually, just target the ship that is closest to you. Um, it's not the most sophisticated targeting algorithm, but it works. Accidentally allowed these. Well, not accidentally, but we have allowed these uh, cruisers to get into torpedo range, which is not what I wanted. Oh yeah, I didn't even look to see if they... Nope, they didn't up armor it. They made it worse. What did you even do? Oh, this is the cheap version. Okay, cool. Somewhere, someone took a torpedo. Took a tannin. Kill these ships. Fuck knows what the battleship ship is trying to kill the destroyers. What the hell? And 
the FPS fix that they introduce when you hover when you do this and like move over ships seems to have been undone. Uh, so I'm expecting another update very shortly. Oh, ho, ho, ho. we have a flash fire. Oh my word, look at all that. Oh no. Poor Austria. Misery. with killing the uh, Ensign Henry when there are ships like right next to it. Oh, poor Kepik. Oh, and the Shona surrenders <laughs> right before the ship falls apart. Um, okay, we lost nothing. Uh, oh, they, <laughs> yeah, they were like, oh my god, a destroyer, kill it! Um, yeah. Damage dealt. Champion goes to the Porthos. Congratulations to them. Although Shona did do a lot of damage, none of it was enough to actually sink any of the ships that we had. Um, <laughs> also, Henry... <laughs> <laughs> Tanking a whole bunch of it. Um, yeah. Okay, back to the map. Okay. Um, it still says they have a very big fleet, so it was... Um, maybe we didn't sink as much as I... Or they, they clearly had more than I thought they had, so I'm going to go back to ending the turn. I don't think this naval invasion is going to go off because the required tonnage has ballooned um, from the 200 or so it should be. Um, which is a bit weird, probably because there's like, yeah, there is this fleet down here, um, could be causing problems, I'm not sure, we'll see. Okay, we've done what uh, Napoleon failed to do, and we have taken Central Russia, um, he never thought to just sail some ships up the Baltic and take... Uh, take St. Petersburg directly by sea. Um, anyway, that I don't think I'm going to be able to invade Western Poland or Prussia particularly easily. Um, no, I need like a million tons. So I'm actually going to pop the ships into port somewhere. This got, did get damaged, so I'm kind of hoping it will bump up again, but um, I'm just going to pop them in Riga, because they're they're currently trying to navally invade Riga, so that should also cause a few problems for them if they're trying to do that. Uh, get the ships a bit of repairs, a bit fixed up. I, I've been fixing the budget in the background. I know I could, probably could run out of the game, but I get nervous that I'm going to balls it up right at the end uh, for no reason. Launching a naval invasion of Crimea just to again cause the Austrians a bit of a uh, bit of a problem there. Um, the naval funds don't seem to be going down. I think they're able to maintain. I think they are able to maintain this fleet. Um, let's just 
difficult to... I don't know if we're going to be able to actually punch them out. How are the offensives on land going? Not great. This one's going nowhere. Uh, that one's just started. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, ooh. Pushing this way. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, right. We have an ambush, which I'm not going to do for obvious reasons. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that. No, I don't think I am. Right. See you in a bit. Now, here we have an opportunity to uh, delete the... Well, I'll delete a little squadron here. Um, but that's actually going to be in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Apple Treadnoughts. Bye for now.